Hi, it's Chester Tucker at Blue Pecan Computer Training, and in this video, we're going to look at how to create absolute references to columns in Excel tables. So by Excel tables, I mean where you've selected a database or clicked into a database and you've got insert table. You can see this is grayed out at the moment because this is already a table. We have a scenario here where we're going to use some sum ifs to do some calculations to return the revenue for each product category in each region. So we're going to have to refer to the columns in this table and then copy the formula across and down this other little table here. And we need to fix the references to the columns within our table. So normally to create absolute references, we would use dollars in our cell addresses. I'd use the F4 function key to achieve that. But when you're referring to cells or columns within tables, the way in which Excel references those columns is different. It uses something called structured references and dollars just don't work with those structured references. So we've got to look at a different method to achieve an absolute reference. Okay, so I'm going to assume if you're watching this video on this particular subject, you already kind of know how to convert a range to a table. So I'm going to assume that, but just to put you in the picture, I've named this table sales table. So that will feature in the formulas that we're going to create. So what I'm going to be doing is some calculations in this table here. And ultimately what I want to do using a sumis function is find out the total revenue for each product category in each region. But before we use that sumis function, let's just do something a little bit more simple just to show you what happens when you refer to a column in a table. So I've got the name of the table and I'm going to add up the revenue. So it's just a normal sum function, no conditions or anything. So that's adding up the total revenue in this table that I've set up. And if I copy that down, it's obviously going to give me the same for all the rows. But when I copy across, it doesn't. Now the reason for that is, is as I copy across, this original formula refers to the revenue column, but this one refers to the product category column. So as we move across, it refers to the different columns in my table. And so that's essentially what we want to avoid when we write our sum ifs function. Okay, so I've cleared those previous formulas and we're now ready to create our sum ifs function. And I'm going to show you how to create a absolute reference to the relevant columns. So the first column we need to refer to is the sum range column, which is going to be that revenue column. Now the way to create an absolute reference to it is to, after the table name, is to put in two square brackets, then refer to the column name, close the square bracket, then a colon, and then refer to that same column again, closing with two square brackets. So you can see the syntax there. Basically, it's the column name, colon, the column name within square brackets on each occasion, and then another set of square brackets outside of those column names. So there we are, that's our sum range. Now, the next argument is criteria range one. So we'll say that's the product category column, so sales, table, two square brackets again, product category, close square bracket, colon, open square brackets, product category, close square brackets, close square brackets, comma. Now the criteria for this is going to be our particular product category, that's in K2. And we'll need to create a mixed cell reference for that if all the product categories are in K2. Comma, criteria range two, that will be the region column. So sales table, two square brackets, region, close square bracket, colon, open square bracket, region, two square, 
two closed square brackets, comma, and then the particular region we're doing the calculation for, which is in L1, which will be fixed on row one. Close the bracket. Right, let's see if that works. Press enter, yes, that works there. If I copy it down and across, you'll see that it works for all of the columns. So that is how you achieve an absolute reference to a column within an Excel table. It is a little bit awkward, I think, but once you get used to writing it in, it's pretty easy to achieve. That's all this video is going to cover, but thank you very much for listening. It's been Chester Tuckwell at Blue Peak and Computer Training.